thank you for your interest in this product. This is a video tutorial for the Finit State Machine Manager for the Unity Asset Store. Um, first, let's see how this works. We have an idle state, and after four seconds, we go to our waiting state. We can move left and right, and you can see how our character direction changes and we activate particles at the base of the character. We can also jump and the character will spin and will stop spinning when we are falling. As you can see we are changing the color of the character each time um, the state changes. There is a different color for each one of the states. What we are doing is changing the material of the character and we set the material for each state via inspector. Um, also when, when we are in idle our position in the ground goes to zero and we look to the camera or towards the camera. It is not exactly looking at the camera but it's looking forward. Okay. As we can he see here, um, we have printed uh, the events that were handled, and we are printing uh, how, s how states changed and what and which was the triggering event. The triggering event. Um, so here we have an enum for the states and an enum for the events. We have idle waiting, moving right, moving left, jumping, falling. And here for the events we have rest, wait, move right, move left, jump and fall. Um, as you can see for events we use verbs and for states we use um, something different. We use actions that represent something that you are doing. Okay, so let's look at our finished state machine initialization. Um, what we do here is that first change this. We can do this later here. Okay, the first thing we do is of course create our instance of the finite state machine and then we add each one of the states using the enums and here what you use is this method where you can Here uh, you can have uh, up to three methods. The init state function is going to be called when the state starts. The update, the update state function will be called uh, each frame, considering that you will call the finish state machine update method each frame. And we have the leave state function that is going to be called when the state ends and before the next state starts here we are calling the finish state machine update method in the update of our model behavior so it is going to be called each frame um, so then we add oh I need to mention that you can pass null uh, in any of these methods if for example you need the init method and you don't need an update method and then you pass a leaf method. So you can have this null and then your method here and it will work. Um, here we are using this for each um, to pass every one of the, the events. Um, then here we are going to set the relations. We need to do this in this order. We need a 
at least one state before we can add events. That's that is uh, necessary because we are create, creating a matrix inside uh, internally in our class. So we need that. Then the relations will tell tells us will tell us um, how states are changed using uh, events as triggers. So for example, is if I'm in the idle state and I pass the wait event to the finish state machine, then I'm going to go to the waiting state. So from idle I can go to moving left, moving left right, jumping using these different events. For example, I cannot go from waiting to idle, so you are not going to see that relation here. And when you are moving, uh, you can go to idle using the rest event, and you can go to jumping using the jump event. But you cannot go to waiting, or you cannot go to the falling state. When you are in jumping, you can only go to fall when you reach the top object of the jump. Um, so we only have one relation going to jumping to falling and from falling to idle when you get to the ground um, well here we are passing this method as a callback when the state changes this method is going to be called let's look at the method um, here when we state changes we receive a, a key that, that is an object of the new state that we are in and we get the name of that state and we pass it to our text that is in here this is our text our text um, state display that is a text uh, in our Unity UI system, and we dis then display the state in here. So going back here, what we do next is that we set up our debug name. Um, what we're doing here, I will show you now later. Here we can set up. We set this up via the inspector in here. We uh, we said if we want uh, the events handle to be printed in here, as you can see, event handle. Here's the the name of the label. We call we are calling it hero. So every time we are referring to this uh, state machine, we are going to have hero in, in front of of our print. And also here, uh, we can ha have which event caused the change to which state. If we set this to true, the enable state change sprint. So we are we have these fields here that we use to set this in here. We can set this up. Uh, at any time but it is important that we do it before we call start because when you call start the init method of the first state is called and you won't have the label the debug label and you won't print this because it is by default set to false so finally we call start and we start in the idle state